everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Cap Kids Art Corner. My name is Devin, and I am here today to lead you through another art activity focused on the five senses, focused on coping skills, and just focused on kind of taking care of ourselves. Um, so before we do our art activity today, which is making cloud dough, which is a super cool sensory uh tool and material, uh, we're going to get our minds and our bodies ready to make art. So you know how that usually goes if you watch these videos, that usually means that we're going to do a deep breathing activity and that's exactly what we're going to do right now. Um, now if you remember, if you've been watching these videos, you might remember from one of the first videos that we've done, we were doing roller coaster breathing. So we're going to do something similar to that except instead of pretending like we're riding a roller coaster while we're breathing, we're going to pretend like we're drawing a square, okay? Um, I oftentimes teach square breathing uh, with my clients that I see in art therapy um, because it sort of helps us regulate and pay attention to the pattern that healthy deep breathing creates. So what we're going to do is I want you to try to imagine when you take a deep breath, I'm going to walk you through this first and then we're going to do it together. So you're drawing a square. So you're going to breathe in for four, hold for four, breathe out for four, and hold for four. And if it helps you to draw, it helps, it helps me to draw um, using my finger while I'm doing it. So if it helps you to draw, absolutely join along. Um, so we're going to do three rounds of square breathing. Um, if you are someone that likes to imagine calm places, you can close your eyes and do that as well. Um, I am going to keep my eyes open and I'm going to be drawing a square as I'm breathing. You can join in, okay? So we're going to breathe in for four. Hold for four. Breathe out for four. Hold for four. And again, breathe in for four. Hold for four. Breathe out for four, hold for four, and one more. Breathe in for four, hold for four, breathe out for four, hold for four. You know, it's interesting. I feel like I was talking to a friend about this the other day, how often we go through full days without even paying attention to our breath at all. Um, so doing things like this can really kind of reset um, our minds and our bodies to be in a place where we can be creative, maybe do some messier activities. Um, and so I don't know about you, but I feel a little bit more prepared to do things that might be challenging once I've sort of checked in with my body and gotten my body ready for it. So now that we've done that, let's get started on making our cloud dough today. Um, so because this is a cloud dough sort of sensory activity, you might be able to guess what sense I'm going to ask you to pay attention to today, and that's the sense of touch, okay? So there are going to be some times that I'm going to ask you to use your hands to tell me what these materials feel like, and then there are going to be some times that I'm going to say, hold off, because we don't want to use, uh, you know, maybe food coloring and dye our hands green or something. We want to try to avoid that. Um, so there should have been, as always, there should have been a material list at the beginning of the videos. Uh, a couple things you will definitely need today are some measuring cups. You're going to need a quarter of a cup measuring cup and one cup measuring cup. Um, you're also going to be needing a glass or a cup to mix in. You're going to need a fork. You will need at least two cups of flour, and you will need a Ziploc bag. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and grab those materials. You can go ahead and grab them, and let's meet back here in just a second, okay? All right, so the first step to making this cloud dough is instead of using food coloring just to dye the dough in general, we are actually, we're going to dye the vegetable oil and then use the vegetable oil to dye the cloud dough, if that makes sense. Uh, we're going to give that a shot. Let's do that together. Um, so you will need your fourth of a cup. It's going to be the smaller of the two, and you're going to be needing your vegetable oil, okay? So you can use any kind of cup to mix this up in. I choose to use this clear glass just so that you can see what the color is going to look like. Um, but at the same time, when I'm when I mix colors in this glass, it gets pretty loud, so I think I might mix it. I might pause it and then mix it and then come back so you don't have to listen to the fork banging on the uh, glass. 
but let's do this part together. So you're gonna take your quarter of a cup of vegetable oil, you're gonna put it in here, okay? And we're gonna put a pretty good amount of food coloring in here. So I'm gonna do, and if you remember from an activity we did a couple videos ago, the food coloring and the oil can look kind of cool, so let's take a second and watch it drop in. So what's happening there, right? So the food coloring doesn't really want to mix with the oil. We have these little kind of orbs of food coloring. So like I said, because it can be kind of loud, I'm going to pause this and mix it and come back. Um, I didn't really count for this one, but if I were to guess, I would say I probably used about 10 to 12 drops. We really want to make this color pretty vibrant. Um, so I'm going to pause this. We'll be right back uh, with some mixed food coloring and vegetable oil. Welcome back. We have our nice dark green well mixed vegetable oil mixture. So that is ready to go, which means we are ready for the next step. Um, so what you want to do is you want to grab your flour and you want to grab your one cup measuring cup and you also want to grab your Ziploc bag. All right, so we got our Ziploc bag. Uh, I believe this one is gallon size. It should be big enough to hold two cups of flour. Um, and so this next part, we're really going to use our sense of touch, but we also really, while we're doing that, we want to be mindful about what we're doing so that we don't end up with flour all over the floor, which is kind of what happened when I tried this out earlier today. So let's try to be mindful and not make too much of a mess. Um, so the, like I said, the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to measure out two cups of flour. Okay. Now while you're measuring out this flour, now might be a good time to use your sense of touch and sort of take a second and make a note about how this flour feels on your, whoo, my goodness, <laughs> how this flour feels on your hands. Um, does it feel cool? Does it feel soft? Does it feel dry? Um, and so the reason I'm asking you to do this is because once we make our cloud dough, I actually don't know. It might feel different. It might feel the same and just be a different color. So let's uh, let's see if we can answer that question for ourselves in a minute. So take our cup. We're going to very carefully pour one cup of flour in here. And then we're going to very carefully pour another cup of flour in the Ziploc bag. Okay. One. Two. Okay. I got flour in my hand, so I'm going to try to get some of it off here and avoid getting it on the floor. I think there's some on the floor anyway. Okay. All right. So we are going to take our mixture. Let me show you. We're going to take our mixture, and we're going to very carefully just pour it right into the Ziploc bag. Now the next step, I want to make sure you see me when I say this. The next step is incredibly important. You want to get as much air out as possible just by giving it a little bit of a squeeze there. But the most important part is I want you to make sure that this Ziploc bag is 100% closed because guess what we're going to do with it once it's 100% closed. We're going to shake it up. So I have double, I have triple checked that this is closed. And now I'm going to very carefully move it around in here. Now, why am I saying very carefully anyway, even though this is closed? I'm saying very carefully because if you're not careful, then your fingernails or your fingers might accidentally puncture this, and then there is flour and olive and vegetable oil everywhere, uh, which is actually what happened to me uh, the first time I recorded this video. So, learn from my mistakes a little bit. So, we are shaking this up. And you might want to shake it up for a few minutes to make sure that the mixture gets uh, well blended. And you can also kind of use this opportunity to use it a little bit as, as a noise maker. I wonder what kind of rhythm we can make from shaking this. All right. And so I'm actually, I'm going to go shake this. I'm going to pause it. And once it's well shaken up, let's come back and meet together and talk for a couple more minutes, all right? Come back. So I mixed it up a little bit, and if yours is at all like mine, 
the color hasn't 100% distributed equally yet. But the good news is, is that because we shook it up and we got it a little bit mixed up, it is now safe for us to use our hands to mix up the color even more. So we're going to grab our bowl. I'm going to use a big bowl so that there's plenty of room for me to mix up this cloud dough. And I'm going to open up the Ziploc bag and very carefully, very slowly, pour it out. All right. Okay. So now we're going to use our hands. We're really going to mix that color up and that olive oil up even more. So here is my main question to you. My question is, how does this texture on your fingers feel different than the texture of just the simple flour? What I'm noticing as I'm mixing this together is that when I squeeze a big handful of flour like this, if it was regular flour, it would just fall apart when I let my hands go. So let's give it one more big squeeze. Look at that. So what do you think is happening there? The combination of the vegetable oil with the flour makes this a little bit more of kind of a squishy texture. And it also means that you can probably, probably do some little sculptures with it if you wanted to. Now this is a little bit of a tricky texture because once you squeeze it, it'll crumble again. Um, but this is a really cool thing that you can add to your sensory bin repertoire, your sensory bin routine if you want to. Um, and I like this a lot because it's super versatile. You can make a bunch of different colors. Um, I Let's see if I can get the, this close enough to the computer without spilling it for you to see the color. It's a pretty pale green, so I think if I were to do this again, I might add even more drops of food coloring in. Check that out. That's a nice kind of pale green right there. Um, and another thing I'm wondering is how it might be to take a little bit of this and a little bit of the sensory rice that we made in like the very first video um, and if that would be a cool texture on our hands. I'm not really sure the answer to that. I think it would definitely be colorful. Um, but what we have done today is we have taken some really sort of regular kitchen supplies and we've turned it into... One, a, a really cool, fun activity, but two, this could kind of be used almost as a stress reliever, right? Um, if you've ever used a stress ball, I, I kind of get the same feeling of using this as I do with like a stress ball. Like it feels, it feels nice in your fingers. Um, and you can use, you can incorporate some toys in here if you want. Uh, you can use cookie cutters. Uh, the possibilities are really endless with something like this. Um, but now... We have got two cups of cloud dough. If you have more flour, you have more oil, and you have more food coloring, you can end up kind of with like a rainbow of different colors. Um, so if this is an activity that you've ended up trying, I would love to see pictures. As always, um, please email me with any questions at devin at capkids.org. Follow us on Instagram at uh, capkidsartcorner. Feel free to tag us in pictures if you decide, if you uh, engage in any of these art activities. Um, and thank you so much for spending a little bit of your day with us. I hope you have an awesome rest of your day, and we will see you soon. Take care.